Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Just trying to find. Yeah. Oh, I want this. How is everyone? How is everyone? I'm trying to find all my stuff. Oh, well, I left that on. Doing great so far, huh? Doing great. Good morning. Hello. Hello. <sighs> so, I did a, a really brief video on third, fourth, fifth dimension because a lot of people don't know what it is. Okay. Um, It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like a conscious, a conscious, okay? Um, so I'm going to explain a few more things and then we're going to get into energy, okay? Um, you guys see how many times I hit these glasses a day? Seriously. Like it's a, it's a thing. Like. Because now I have to wear the glasses all the time. You know how close I must come to hitting my eyeballs like every single day? Because you notice how like I'm always tapping. So like I must have been like so close to like jabbing myself in the eye every single day. But I never did. I never did. So briefly with the dimensions, if you have, if you have questions, ask me. But, um, let me back me up. Okay. Um, ask away. A lot of people think, too, you're jumping dimensions. You're not jumping anything. Just so you know. A lot of people will be like, I have one of these cards over here staring at me like perfectly straight up it's the six of swords um a lot of people think you're jumping but you you actually you're not jumping okay you it this is your consciousness it's it, it's where you're at you know the the third dimension is is where we live in this world and it's it's what how we process what we think can we get to the next dimension like, I go in between the fourth and the fifth all the time. As soon as I let go of certain fears, I think I'll be good. Um, so we're not jumping, okay? We're not, like, in another world. It's, it's our thought process. It's our programming. Like, I truly believe, like, we are reincarnated. And we do this over and over and over. It, you're part of life is reaching your higher conscious. It's what we're put here for with lessons and stuff, right? We go through all that. And then from there, you can truly live in harmony once you reach fifth dimension. And then you truly get to live in accordance to how you're supposed to be living. And then you get to choose what's next. What do you want in your next lifetime? What do you, do you want to come back to the 3D? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? I think every single job we have is hard. You know, can you imagine being a guide? It's got to be hard. Doing the life over and over. It is, that's probably one of the easiest jobs for us. Thank you, shirt. The shirt? Yeah. I haven't worn it in a while. I remember exactly the last time I wore it. Actually, it's only the second time I wore it. <laughs> um, so, uh, what are you doing? You want to take her down with you? Yeah. You think got work today? Mm -hmm. 
and I have my call at 145. You have to? You kind of looks at it. Huh? If I can, and I'll get it. It's not about. Uh, just go away. Okay, come on. Just go away. Lucy, let's go. I love you. Love you. Oh my god. She's stretching. <laughs> She's tired. Okay, go. Go. Oh my god. Quickly. Yes. So. There's that. It's brief. Okay. Um, what do you want to do with your life? You know what I mean? With you want complete happiness. It's it's actually a thing. You can have it. You know what I mean? Jelly beans. Um, what's I going to say? Remember WKIP in Cincinnati? I don't know what that's about. Maybe something with someone with Cincinnati. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know my little jelly beans. Does anybody have any questions? Are my questions even on? They are. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, there we go. I didn't see all you guys. Hey. Hey. 609 here. I don't know what that is, Lori. Laura. Obviously, I have your code. I'm good. How are you guys? How is everyone? Hey, Court. Hey. Hey. Can you explain what it means about the ego and not existing? Oh, okay. So, basically, we live in a very egotistic surrounding we all work with our egos every single day okay it's 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 a good thing and it's a bad thing um the only time you are not working with your ego and it's unconditional love and you're connected between masculine and feminine is orgasm whether any type of orgasm if you're same sex same thing okay um but that is the only time we never use our ego like obviously you some people use their ego in the process of sex you know wanting to be really good wanting to please wanting to do this that's that's ego that's your ego talking that's that's not love because if there was love you wouldn't worry about if someone's pleasing oh, someone yeah. else your pause order can't be if you want no it wasn't i just put that in it's brand new oh it looked really, it, oh. maybe it was so full it looked empty yeah. when I looked at it quick, I guess. I was going to say if you needed to pause or if you do that. So that is the only time during orgasm where you're not using your ego. It, it's, it's your higher self. It's love. And, and that's it. That is the only time in the 3D. We all hear, we're all programmed. Okay. A lot of people won't agree with me on that but that's that's okay okay um so that is the only time because you're, you're in the moment of freedom you're in the moment of yeah your higher conscious your, your body right so that is the only time ego is not being used in the 3d um because we're meant, when we come in, we're meant to go through this process. And I, I mean, I've been stuck in between the, the fourth and the fifth dimension. I can't even tell you for a while. I'm so close. It's so hard to, to let go of fears. And it seems so unpractical. But we're all here to learn to get to that unconditional love. You notice when people are at the happiest and, and fullest in life, no matter what they have, it's because they, they've reached the fifth dimension. Nothing can get in their way. 
could a kundalini remove the ego no no absolutely not a lot of people go through kundalinis too fast too okay um you got to be careful with kundalini awakenings <sighs> that's a whole nother topic but no a kundalini would not kill an ego you would have to you can't be ego free in, until you're you're completely self love unconditional love like me i always say I, i'm unconditional love but because i'm i still have fear attached to stuff that's not unconditional i haven't even reached that yet even though i share it and teach it i'm i'm pretty sure i have the unconditional love down to a t but it's the fear that I still live with, with certain stuff. And it's not fear, oh, I'll be alone, or I'll never have anybody. Mine always comes down to money. Always, no matter if it's in the bank or it's not. I got four babies. I support my children. I. Just me. Okay? So... I don't get child support. I don't, it's, it's, it's regardless. Okay. So I still hold on to that fear. Even if I have it in the bank, sometimes I won't even spend it because of the fear that something else won't come in because I have, I own my own business. This is what I do. If you guys don't need readings, guess who doesn't get paid? See what I'm saying? So it's like, I still live in that fear and I know I'm not supposed to, but in a practical sense, how can you not? I'm supporting myself and four children, right? But you have to learn not to. That's when all that stuff just starts flowing and coming your way. But I get it. It, it, it seems so unpractical not to have that fear, but that's, that's a fear I got to let go of. I, it, I could be alone the rest of my life. I'm never alone. I got spirit. I got my kids. I don't need someone to complete me. I, I don't need a spouse. Would it be nice? Yeah, but it's not necessary. You know what I mean? Do I connect with people, certain people, when you feel the readings? Oh, yeah. You know, so um, luckily I've been fortunate enough to to flow but like as an entrepreneur as an individual you do worry about that stuff but once you stop worrying about that type of stuff that's when life just flows you know but it's it's hard you know to to not i'm, I'm so i really am getting close to to be in there you know and then from there there's there's so many other places to go i mean I have that unconditional love, but I haven't let go of the fear. So until I let go of the fear, which I, I don't know how, okay? So it, it just happens. You get to a point where you just, you're so comfortable. And that's why I'm in between. I've always been in between the fourth and the fifth. I've, I've always, I was born in the fourth, you know, born into the third, but in the fourth where I couldn't understand certain stuff, never followed rules, laws, that type of stuff. Everyone always wanted to blame it on, you know, medical conditions or ADD or it's, it wasn't like that for me. I learned my own way, my own time, didn't follow rules by any means. You know what I mean? Like even my mom made a comment the other day and she's like, yeah, I've never been able to get you to do that. She's like, I used to try money gold stars, chats. I must have did something the other day and she's like, yeah, I was never successful at that. Like, I, I swear she feels like she failed in life raising me. And it's it hurts. It's like, what? You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean you feel like you failed? Like, I think you did a great job. I'm just, I'm my own person. I just, I didn't turn into a clone. That's all. I, I broke conditioning, generational conditioning. That's all, you know, so I've always been my own person. And I and I think it's hard for her to even see me raise my babies, to be honest with you, because it's not her way. You know, I love Socrates, Socrates philosophies. Um, but 
it is what it is, guys. You, you, you weren't here to please other people. You, you're put on this earth to work on your own stuff. You can't access DNA. You can't access the higher realms. You can't access this stuff until you're actually in the fourth dimension anyway. You know, certain things release certain things, but it doesn't move you into a higher conscious. You can reach higher... I just saw something. You can reach higher consciousness in the 4D, of course, but it's not complete with unconditional love. You don't reach that holy trinity of the divine energy until you're fully in the fifth. We can work through it. You know, like I say to you all the time, like, people ask me all the time, are you, are you this? Are you that? What are you capable of? How do you, how do you do this? It is, it's hard for me to explain. I know I work with goddesses, right? So that kind of makes me one, but I don't ever want to look at myself as a goddess. I don't even know the full explanation of a goddess. You know what I mean? I just, I just know it's light. You know, I, I know it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's empowering. It's, it's divine energy. Okay. That's also why I have the ability to heal. And, it, and it's ironic because my counter match always calls me a goddess. And I'm like, you're so sweet. But like, he, he does it without even realizing who I actually am is even more crazier because it's actually who I am. So it's like I said, we, we don't jump. We're not jumping dimensions. It's where we get in our, our conscious. Can we reach higher consciousness? Cause once you do, you look at life in a whole new perspective, then you can live out your life like you want to there is once you reach the the fifth dimension you die happy you you you, you leave your soul when you want to when you had enough when you're ready to to do other things when you reach certain levels um you don't age like that that that's there's so many people in other countries, mind you, not really the U.S., that live to be over 100 and it's not unknown and, and they're healthy because it's, it's, they're living in their higher conscious. They, they, they've matched that. They've met it. You know what I mean? I don't know what goddesses, I, well, I do, I know I work with, with Venus, obviously. Well, that's not an obvious, there's all sorts of different type of goddesses. Right, but I that's who I connect to feminine goddesses, not gods. I work with the divine, feminine. Light workers can can work with anything. I just know that's what I work with, and it makes me wonder: Am I here to empower women? But to me, in my mind, why wouldn't I not want to empower men at the same time? Right? So I'll get there. I'll figure it all out. I'll figure it all out in due time, troops. I'm, I'm in no rush to figure it out. I'm trying to get to my point in my life where I'm in that energy of not living in fear. You know? So I work with a lot of goddesses and they're, they're feminine, <laughs> you know, but I don't know. I think it's a blessing. I don't think I need to figure out exactly who I am or, or focus on why I'm here as long as I'm doing what I enjoy and I'm, I'm helping and I'm happy. I'll get there. I'll get to where I need to be. If I overanalyze or overthink and try to figure it out, you're just going to get stuck. And you can't even access your gifts until you're in the fourth dimension anyway. So a lot of people that come into the world that are psychic and they're mediums and all this stuff. 
I have those abilities too. I'm really good at just knowing the future and predicting certain things to the point where I think it's like it actually holds me back and puts me in an awkward situation. I think sometimes I'd, I'd rather figure out how to maneuver through the webs, to be honest with you. Because knowing certain stuff makes it harder for me to reach it. Who are we and why are we here? We're, we're basically well reincarnated. We're, we're here to reach our higher selves and, and to bring light into this world. Everyone is born with these gifts. Everyone. It's how you access them, how you utilize them. You know? We're here to, to reach our, our fullest potential and, and then actually live the life you always wanted to live. You always had dreams of this or this or doing that or doing this. You can't even access your DNA or your past lives until you're in the fourth dimension. Do you know how many people in this universe never reach the not even the fourth dimension? Because the people that are really content and comfortable, they don't they don't need to because they already have certain stuff. But they're they're gonna freaking struggle with other stuff. Believe that, and they'll just keep re repeating and doing this, and eventually things get harder and harder and harder. It really just depends on what you believe in. I truly believe we'll all be carnated over and over and over. And it's sickening. That's why we know everybody. That's why this one hangs out with this one. And you always, you blow your mind. Like your children start hanging out with kids you went to school with. Or, or they meet this one at college. And it's like, did you know this one hung out with this one? No, we're all fucking webbed. We're all, well, it, that's just how it happens. Generation after generation after generation. Like, it's not a coincidence. You know what I mean? Like, it's meant to go down that way well we all interact it, it, you need that one person to break something you get to certain ages you don't it's not that you don't care about certain friends anymore it's just you don't find you relate with certain people anymore it's either their energy their vibe their purpose your purpose you don't feel the need to explain yourself like, I never felt the need to explain myself. Even my mom says the other day, she even said that something to me the other day. She's like, can you explain that to me? And I'm like, no, I actually can't. And it's it's not me being an ass being like, because I don't need to. It's me actually not being able to explain it, but makes perfect sense to me. You know, so it... <sighs> It really just depends on your beliefs. You know? And you can't even reach the fourth dimension unless you have guides and teachers and light workers and, and goddesses and gods and all these. Like, you can't even reach the fourth dimension. Then you're just stuck. But believe it or not, um, a lot of, like, drug addicts and alcoholics they, they were already in like the fourth dimension like that's where depression comes in and certain stuff where you can't figure it out and you you can't allow the the breakdown and the judgment you can't you your body won't allow you to comprehend or, or take the pain you, you can't a spiritual awakening is it's it's freaking brutal it's so brutal. It's not graceful by any means. I mean, you get knocked down. I mean, I got knocked down like you wouldn't believe to the point where I didn't even tell my parents. I told one friend. I used to cry. I quit a, a, a terrific job. I had just went through a divorce. I had so much money in the bank. I had plenty of money in the bank that I went through and lived off of until... It was gone because I couldn't function. And I was just paying bills and doing this and doing that. Not looking for another job. I've, I literally considered 
putting myself in a mental institution in a mental institution because I I did, couldn't explain what was happening to me and I knew it was so hard guys because I knew if I was to talk to my parents about this and this was a spiritual awakening I, I knew they wouldn't understand they had always never understood me anyway loved me unconditionally but didn't understand right and I knew if I told anybody that was it they were going to take my kids and it still breaks my heart to this day thinking about it because I knew they probably would have like I went through this stage where I I understood I would have never took in my life but I I was also put in the position to understand why people do take their lives and I always said to myself if I didn't have children I probably would have took my life you know what I mean like that's how brutal it was and nobody could understand and I wasn't able to explain what was happening and it was just awful and I went through that for about a year until a friend encouraged me um, to to start a YouTube channel and, and just like that this is where I found myself but for a solid year I was alone I mean it still hurts you, you have no idea how hard it is a spiritual transformation and it's, it's not quick it's not graceful it's awful and it breaks you down so you can get in tune to who you are so you can actually reprogram your thought process and break conditioning okay so that was about that was about three years ago and that lasted for about a year I mean, I got to the point where I couldn't function. I couldn't go to work. I was lightheaded. I could feel people's energies. I could feel dark energy. It was, it was just awful. And I secluded myself from my family. Like my mom would call me like once a week and I'd be lucky if I'd answer. And I got to the point where it was so bad. Like I couldn't even remember the last time I, I talked to my mom or, and, and, and mind you, everyone's like, how's Courtney? Cause I had just gone through a damn divorce. Right. So I think a lot of people thought I was just in depression because of the divorce. And, and that was, that was a blessing. The divorce, <laughs> you know, it wasn't depression by any means. It was a blessing in disguise. And I think that was another reason why I ended up finding myself at home because they, they're part of my karma, right? So I had to find that bond again. I, I had to rekindle that relationship. And now, because I explained certain stuff and until to this day, stand my ground when it comes to certain stuff. I'm, I'm sorry you don't like it. This is me and this is what I do. And to be honest with you, they don't even know the extent to what I do. I mean, my dad loves me unconditionally, but he swears I still look into a crystal ball. Did the stars tell you? They don't get it, nor will they ever. And that's okay. I accept that. In their comment, to accept what I do without me having to explain myself. So I'm not quite sure if they're there yet because they still seek answers and explanations and I can't give explanations on how I know and stuff or I just I can't I've never been able to ever uh, you've always someone was in family to always question me it would I'd go mute or I'd laugh even though deep inside I wanted to cry because I could tell the story in my head and explain it in my head, but it would never come out my mouth. You know, and man, did my parents put me through testing like you wouldn't believe. And I and I think growing up, wow, I'm getting upset. Like I always felt like the odd one, or why can't people relate to me, or why do I feel dumb when I know I'm not dumb? So it was just, I could answer questions and, and teachers would be like, Courtney, you don't do your homework. You don't study. Like, how do you know the answers? And when I would go to explain, I couldn't explain how I knew the answers. It was, it was so hard growing up. So hard. So 
when this transformation, spiritual enlightenment happens, it was just earth shattering. It was awful. Awful. And, and now I don't feel the need to explain anything. But people just look at me like my sister sometimes will be like, that's so selfish. And it's so heartbreaking. Because to me, it's not not selfish. It's not necessary for me to have to explain certain stuff. If it has nothing, if it's irrelevant and has nothing to do with you anyway. You know, so going through a spiritual transformation is the hardest thing you will ever go through in, in your entire life. Want to take care of a journey to one subscriber? So everybody goes through struggles and fears and you can still vibrate at a certain level. Like I usually vibrate from like nine and up, you know what I mean? Um, and it's, and it's very hard to constantly be at that vibration and not actually be in the 5D. It's, it's kind of unsettling. <clears throat> it makes it for a really hard life. But you'll notice any teachers or guides or light workers, a majority of them, their stories are, are so hard and how we got here. And I literally came onto YouTube not knowing how meetings were supposed to go or, or do certain stuff. I just told myself, there's no way I am the only one in this universe that the way I think because I've never met anybody who could fully accept me and understand me for me maybe two people in my whole life and that's not the first time I've said this it really is like that um and because my whole life I, I, my even parents would be like I don't understand how you think I don't understand how you process shit I don't understand how you do this and it's like it's not for you to fucking understand it's, it's been so frustrating my whole entire life. And I just, one day I said, you know what? Like, fuck this. Like, there's no way I'm the only one that thinks and processes the way I do. And now look, we all became friends. You know what I mean? Like, I've helped thousands. I can't even tell you the emails. Like, with me not even explaining stories, just the way I talk and I heal and I in in certain stuff, it's just it's healing. You click, you get it. Without me having to explain why. That's because it's it's also healing energy. Not, you know, not everyone I've always thought outside the box too, and people never like really understood. Like they always were like, that's not practical thinking. You know, like Finally, I just got really sick of hearing it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just do what it is I do. You know, and how many times have I been telling you guys it's only a matter of time before I knew I'd be known. And not just YouTube known, but known across the world. And it's taken me how long to get there and to get into alignment. But that's another reason why it's taken me so long to get even to the place where I know I'm supposed to be. Because I know. So like I'm saying, when you know things, it, it doesn't make your life easier. It actually makes it harder because then that's one more process you have to learn and go through to figure out. It's placing all the gifts. And, and the more I try to figure out which gifts I have, it, it takes away from my purpose, which is healing. So I just do what I do instead of overthinking. And, and that that's what helps. That's what helps you guys. As long as I'm passionate about it and I'm true and I'm real and I'm not trying to portray how things are supposed to be, then I'm exactly where I need to be. And if somebody doesn't accept that or like that or understand that, not my problem. I've tried my whole life to try to get my parents to 
my, my parents have tried their whole lives to try to get me to understand what it's like to live in the real world because they always told me you don't live in the real world. No, nope, I don't. But they always looked at that as being a problem and unrealistic. And it's just, it's not. And it's just, it's the journey is just so hard. And it's still hard. It's still a process. I don't have to want to worry about this and worry about that. But I still do in a practical manner. And I think a lot of it has to do with me still being at home. You know? So. We all go through the struggle. You know? And we do have energy to help. We do have healers. We do have all this stuff, for sure, you know. But I, I certainly wasn't put on this planet to read cards. I heal. I help. You know, you get these new people that come on and say, oh, she does too much talk and there's too many interruptions. Or is this a show? Or is this a card reading? Well, you're getting both. And if you don't like it, get off my fucking channel. Don't be rude. Because you don't like that. The information's not coming quick enough to you. My whole story is an entertainment. It's, it's part of healing. It's part of growing. Understanding that you're not alone. You know what I mean? It was, it was actually, it, you know what triggered me a lot was my my counterpart and he's so smart he's so intelligent and i've never lived my life the way he's lived his so that triggered so much stuff for me too like i can understand what he's saying i know that sounds weird but he's so freaking intelligent. Like it's, it's actually sometimes when I'm with him, it's, it's never intimidating ever, but like, we're so different, but our, it's our souls that are like the same, you know? So it's like, we just love, right. But I think another reason why we came together is because when you have a cat part where you guys are opposites like that, it's actually perfect because this one's better at this one, this one's better, not necessarily better, but this one can do this one, this one can do this one. You come together and it's just like, you guys, you're just going to be on fire, right? Um, but it's like, because you think and process things differently. So if this one thinks this way, but I think this way, could you imagine if you're actually doing a project and you put both thoughts together, then you're able to reach more people. There's, there's such beauty in when you find your counterpart. It's hard, though. It's, it's actually really, really hard. But it's, it's beautiful. But, I mean, her, he's so freaking smart. He uses words where I'm like, what's that even mean? You explain what that means, and then I'll explain to you what I think it means to me, or how I would break it down. Like, we break it down differently, but if I was to break down something, he would still understand my concept. You know what I mean? It's it's so bizarre. It's so bizarre that we ended up being counterparts. Like, your, your counterpart is, is really so different from you, but you guys will have a lot in common. You enjoy the same things, or you enjoy doing things that they enjoy because they enjoy it. You guys will just mesh. You don't have to worry about how the future goes or if you move in together too quick or if you're making the right moves or did we wait too long for the... It doesn't work that way. That's where it becomes complicated when you actually meet your counterpart because people want to put practicality on it. They want to put time limits on it. But when the two of you can just enjoy what you have because you both know, that's when things can just flow. That's when life begins if you if you get to meet that person. 
and everyone has a chance of meeting that person, but you have to go through all the egotistic stuff that we go through in the 3D. You know what I mean? In the 5D, you never, you don't need sex. In the 3D, you feel like you need it. But it's lack of self love It's not because you're horny. It's because you feel a need because you're not getting that need from either something else. You're not getting the need from something else, point blank. You know, in the 3D, it's like, you, in the 5D, you wouldn't even have to ask. It, it, it's just like, you just know when it's time or not even time. You just, you either end up just kissing. You just, you just come together. It's, it doesn't even have to be in your head. It, it's just like you guys can be that within a close vicinity of each other. And it's not even knowing the end and knowing that that's going to go down. It's like you could just literally be in someone's arm and the next thing you know, you just next thing you know, you make them love. It, it's just, it's so, it just flows, you know? Um, so a lot of my new ones, I don't know if you've been through a spiritual breakdown because to me it's like people call it like a spiritual awakening um but to me it's a spiritual breakdown and you can't get to other dimensions without a spiritual breakdown like your life has to completely freaking crash upside down smashed stepped on ran over buried resurrected buried again resurrected you don't just come out of it once and you're good like whoo i made it like no it's turmoil that is a true spiritual awakening and and people call it a journey and it, it, it obviously it is a journey right but it's like whew. if you haven't been through one of those yet eventually you will um I feel like a majority of people, new subscribers and stuff, this is, they probably already reached this stage. Because I'm a healer. So now, whether you realize it or not, when you find me, it's because you're trying to understand. You're feeling broken, even though you could be feeling happy. You know what I mean? There's still something that that's missing. It is usually why you come in the direction. You don't seek me because of this, this, and that. It's you want the answers. It's I know your story and I know your story because you're part of my soul group. So it's even harder for a light worker to experience this stuff and, and teach because we're we're teaching from pain and knowledge. Like pain you wouldn't believe. The nightmares that we, we go through, have gone through, the destruction, the, the breakdowns, like it's 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 like a a, a blessing and a curse. To, to be a light worker, to be any type of teacher, spiritual teacher. You won't find one spiritual spiritual teacher that has had a happy-go-lucky fucking life. If you have, they don't know jack shit. They don't know jack shit when it comes to knowledge. I'll tell you that. So you meet those happy-go-lucky... You know what, to me, is so frustrating, the ones that, you know, it's all about the meditation. I... I tell you guys all the time, like, it's not really about, meditation is nice. I'm always in a meditative, meditative state. I live in a meditative state. That's why I can't grasp the 3D. I'm an extreme heavy meditator. But when you're an extreme heavy meditator, you don't even realize you're in meditation mode. Make sense? This is why I, my whole life I've been like, huh? Everyone's like, get, get your head out of the fucking clouds. Like, my, my head's not in the fucking clouds. My head's uh, above the fucking clouds clouds like I can't relate to you because I don't know where you're fucking coming from I don't live on this level I don't live on the level of of humans 
You know what I mean? Like, I'd much rather chill out with the dead any day. I'd rather party with, with them, you know? So, like, because they get me. <laughs> it's who I am, you know? So, like, it's like that. And then you get all these people who go to seminars and I'll, I'll, I'll make you the best manifesto you ever want to be and I'll give you the steps and you know, and you're going to be the happiest you ever lived. Are you fucking out of your mind? It's like dark energy. You're fucking with the light is what you're doing because you can't just step into that type of levitation. Like it's not a thing. They make you feel welcome and they make you feel like you're borderline. You got this because they're master magicians at the same time. I'm not saying like all of those people are like that, but a majority of them. I've had a, a great life. Well, then where the fuck did you come from? Where did you come from? Because you didn't come from up above. You didn't break condition. Come here and have a happy life. I think as if you're an earth angel or like you sign up to come back this way, but like you wouldn't be interacting with the 3D. You wouldn't be a YouTuber. You wouldn't be a musician. You wouldn't be an actor. You you wouldn't be that type of person in the human world. That would be silly. You know what I mean? Like, just be careful who you're listening to, who, where you're going, what you're doing. Like, it's just the way it is. It really, truly is. Um, I And another thing, when you're on your way to the 5D, it's hard because you find yourself in a position where, like, say me for four months, like for four weeks now, it's like wanting to do this, but I can't really find what it is, even though I know... It needs to transition. But I, it, it's all like mental because I'm already in the transition. So that's why I'm saying stop trying to figure stuff out like that. Overanalyze or overthink. Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Just do what it is you do that makes you happy at the end of the day. And you won't find yourself in a situation of really questioning things anymore. Hi. I got to run to the bathroom. I had a whole lot of coffee. So like I almost just took you with me like you were a friend. <laughs> um... I need lotion. Um, let me hold that thought. I'll talk about it when I come back because I obviously can't bring you with me. So basically, I went through like the last four weeks of, okay, so I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Well, I'm going to try to do this. Do I work on this? Do I talk about that? Do I talk about this? Do I do I mash that up? Do I do this? It makes it so hard to live your life when you're trying to find what your purpose is. And at the end of the day, I'm telling you guys, if you're fucking happy and you're following your passion and, you, and you're helping and you enjoy it, you're exactly where you need to be. You don't have to continuously wonder this, wonder that, wonder this. I don't know what will come to me next. I don't know if all of you will be okay with whatever comes to me next. But as long as I like it, I'm going to teach it and preach it. Because I'll always be in the public eye teaching. It's it's what I do. It, it, it's masses versus classrooms. Right now we're just saying classrooms. But it, you think it's only a matter of time when you have someone with certain abilities like me. Once I come into tune with certain things and I find my my knack, 
That's where things go global for anyone, not just me, anyone. You know what I mean? So if you've always had like a hard time processing certain stuff or trying to understand, or if you have children like this, um, because we're all born like this and it's conditioning that, that you either allow your children to continue being a free bird, a free thinker, or you, you put a stop to it. Like when all my kids are like ambidextrous and so on, I, and the teachers used to stress to me all the time because when they were home, I never had them pick a hand. I always allowed them to be ambidextrous. And the teachers have such a hard time with that. They'll be like, Mrs. McGinty, your child has to choose a hand. You know, and it's like, okay, buddy, you know, you got to you gotta choose a hand when in school and stick with that one hand because if you don't, the, the teacher is just going to keep coming at you. And it, it's so frustrating, you know, and I think that's another reason why my parents have a hard time on how I raise my children and what I allow and what I don't allow. It's like the complete opposites of how I was raised. And it's not because how I was raised and I didn't like and appreciate how I was raised. It's just the, the certain knowings and, and letting my kids be that free spirit and go in the direction they choose. Because I think it's just more, it's more freeing and liberating and they can find themselves and all children are gonna make mistakes. We can't stop anyone from making a mistake. It's, it's a thing we're, we're conditioning f screws us. You know, so it is, it is frustrating. Um, I, I do wish we had spiritual schools. I do, I, I do, you know, um, cause it's, it's not easy to stay at home and, and have a business and homeschool children and because you're still going by their curriculum, you know what I mean? So you know, you got private schools, you got this, you got public schools. Why not have spiritual schools? Like, not necessarily like teaching kids like potions and, and stuff like that, but like teaching them about earthly plants and, and, and how, like I'm telling you, it will make such a difference in life. I don't know how many parents will allow your child to go through that type of thing but I certainly would you know because it teaches you about health and morals I mean all this stuff that we need to live a happy life you know so maybe one day we'll get there you know we still have you know certain curriculums but You know, it sucks when you get to high school and it's like you get to choose which type of science do you want. Do you want geometry? Oh, that's math. Do you want, you know, things about the met metric system or do you want plant science? Like, you shouldn't have an option. You should be doing each course. Like, if I could have did plant science over and over and over, I would have. Like, it was just like the connection I felt. I never wanted to even leave that classroom. Just digging my hands in the soil. You know, so you can have a spiritual community, right? Um, maybe there is some type of program that I can do when it comes with children. I don't, I don't know how to do that yet, but I do think it's important you know, because by law, your children have to go to these schools, but that doesn't make them a success at the end of the day. You know, you don't need college to be happy in life. You need college because of conditioning and because of society and to be what you want to be. Obviously, certain doctors, that type of credentials, that's a given. But, but I don't know. There's, I, I feel a strong need to work with children, too. I just don't know what age limits, what, 
what groups yet, you know. I think it, you know, I think you reach around like three, four, that's when conditioning kicks in. Um, and you get all these children that, oh, they're such rebels and they're such, you know, send them to military school, send them to discipline, whatever. And it's like, those are the kids that are so freaking smart. That they, they just don't know what to do with themselves. They don't they don't need discipline. They don't need some them in the corner. They don't need rulers smacked on them. They need love. They need to understand what they're going through. You know, I work with quantum physics all the time. It's I'm always in that field. You know, I teach you guys that too. I I am gonna talk about you guys with energy one day. I know I've been saying that for a good week now. Um, and I'll I'll definitely get to it. Um, but. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta figure that type of stuff out. Cause that's where we need teachers too. Because right in between, <coughs> they're right in between of losing their free thinking because of conditioning. It's tough, but we live in society, so we can't avoid the conditioning. You know, so. You know, you teach your kids other languages and, and, and this, this, and that. Why not add in, you know, what what's important? I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure that out. It's just, it's it's so important. Because you don't find places like this and until you're older and you, you go through a breakdown or you're seeking guidance or you're hearing about this or you're seeing things, you're hearing things, but you don't want to talk about it. And then you seek out Tarot and Tarot doesn't give you the answers of everything that we just went through, that type of breakdown. That's, it's just... It explains energy so you might know where you're at and what's happening, you know, but it's it's also a tool for the doc to keep you from breaking conditioning because that's their job. I mean, from not breaking conditioning because they feed off a of dark. That makes sense. You know, so you do have that, that dark energy where they love when you're in between dimensions too because that's when they come in and they snag you. And they're going to be like, oh, we're going to convince you to sit near this rock a little while longer because they can feed off of you. You know what I mean? They can't. It's a long story. But I think to just know the basics of the start of spirituality it makes a big difference and you know what's a I don't know come up with some something would just happen I, I I really truly believe it's with me it's it's reaching obviously you guys too right but like children so or to reach our own children there's too many gateways, there's too many voids, yeah, there's all of that, you know, and it's, it's a much easier way to, to live a more free life. I'm telling you, I'd say within like 50 years, spirituality is going to be top to rank freaking religion. It's going to overpower all the religions. And one person can change the world. I, I know it's hard for us to believe that sometimes, you know. But I mean, look at all the inspirational people, you know. Um, we all have that capability. It's just coming up with that one theory where you can break it down and so many people can connect with it. It's, it's actually called the 100th mon monkey effect. And... 
that's when you meet these people in life that that impact that type of movement. We're kind of all capable of it. I know I'm capable of it. It's it's coming up with that that theory. And believing in it and and it's the way something's presented to and, and who it's presented from and believing in it. And if you get enough people to believe, it changes the lifetime you live in. You can make that much of an impact. So one pe person can change the world with a certain philosophy, idea, theory. It's, it's how it's presented. And if people think it's believable or not. You know, so, you know, so, there's that. Any other questions on what it is we're talking about? Because I'm actually ready to read energy. But what I'm going to do is click out of this video and start another one. But is there anything else that we should address? And I got to plug you in. I'm definitely opening you guys' third eyes right now. Can you guys feel it? You got to feel it when that happens. I heal souls, though. I, I do do long distance like healing it takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus um but like when i activate you guys the chakras do you actually feel it i'm just curious does it happen like later in the day for you or is it simultaneously because like, I know right now I'm activating third eyes. Well, I'm also in my higher conscious right now speaking. But at the same time, it does activate. For a majority of you, I mean, I can feel my root chakra right up to my, So it's not speaking through to you through aura. It's It's coming from the soul. I just didn't know how it worked with you guys sometimes. I didn't know if like... It kicks in. A lot of people will text me and be like, oh, later that night it happens or email me. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm actually activating you guys' crown chakra too, which is fantastic because you want to start. I mean, at the root chakra, not the crown. You want to start at the root. Because once it hits a crown, I'm going to... I also activate you guys' gifts. I, some of you guys must feel confused too. I wonder if I ever activate like spiritual breakdowns for you. And you're probably like, damn it, I shouldn't have listened to that chick. What was her name again? She's so lightheaded. <clears throat> It's hard for me to when I go in. I'm so nauseous right now. I'm so nauseous and light It's disgusting. Um, it's hard for me to go into. Hold on, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. I almost want to stop the video, but I can't. I just want to stop talking for a minute because if I, I'll throw up if I keep talking.
<clears throat> That's what happens when all my chakras align real quick. It's not easy when they all activate at the they all activate at the same time. If it happens too quick, it's which happens to me a lot when I go into public. Hasn't happened in a while though. Um, hasn't happened in a while though. Um, I remember last time I went into a, a baby, a baby shower. And I looked at Marsh and I left and I just sat in the car and she's like, what are you doing? Like, are you about to have a panic attack? Like what's happening? And I'm like, no, it's not like that. Like I just, I, I don't like the freaking energy in there. Like it's awful. And I don't know if it was all the people at the baby shower or if it was the energy within the restaurant. Like it was, it was hard. And I, I made myself go back in and cope and, and balance and work through the energies. It was awful. But my chakras just got all activated at one time. They're always active, but they act they got activated and it they got activated real freaking quick. I'd say within two minutes. They were all like beaming. Um oh, it's a lot. It's a lot. I can't even imagine like being like, well, I just, I picture something like this happening. Um, Cause I just pictured myself like, it's weird. I just pictured myself like on a talk show, which I think for me is my channel. Right. But could you imagine like me ever really being like on a talk show? Like, I don't know how well I would handle that. Like, everyone's energy like that I guess once I figure out how to like balance and all that but could you imagine being like on like Ellen or Oprah and just going through exactly what I just went through until I balanced out my shit awkward awkward I've always been looked at it awkward though it doesn't phase me oh I am not out of alignment are you kidding me I am in complete alignment. If I was out of alignment, I couldn't be doing this type of work. That's the silliest thing I ever heard. I'm in full alignment. I can do crowds. I've always been able to do crowds, especially concerts, you name it. That's different. just happens here and there but that I mean that happens real quick check the video later what do you mean sweetie What do you mean check the video? Remember what I told you when I went to that mall in Nashville? That was awful. That was kind of like that. Where I had to step outside of the mall. I didn't even get that feeling when I went into the, the Grand Ole Opry. It actually happens in the mall. I'm faster than my words. Yeah, but that 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 doesn't bring me out of alignment. I'm in alignment. Everything that I go through in my path right now is in alignment for me. Once you're in alignment, you can't come out of alignment. Once you go spiritual, you get to a certain level, there's no going back. Your life would be awful. You wouldn't be able to cope. You wouldn't be able to figure it out. That's why when certain people say to me, why don't you go back to doing this, doing that? I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to cope or function. 
because I found where I need to be. <clears throat> so Anywho, I guess I'll go back and, and read what was going down. But just because you feel that way, like you get nauseous of what I just experienced, that is not you being out of alignment. That is called, that is you in full alignment. I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of got insulted. Kind of aggravated me. And I kind of want to know why you think that. In a very non judgmental way. But just so you guys know, FYI, that's not being out of alignment. By any means. Get out the dog in. Ah, uh, Teresa. <laughs> Thanks, sweetie. Ooh. Did we get an explanation for that or did, did we not? Okay. So just FYI for all of you guys, when stuff like that happens, you are not out of alignment. You're actually very much so in alignment. That's when you got to learn how to balance the energies between earth and sky that has i was also accessing the higher line right there which is above and beyond the chakras of your aura we'll get into all that though so just because your chakras guys are being activated just know that doesn't mean you're out of alignment. And I'm pretty sure she's a follower. I'm not mad at you. I'm, I'm just trying to understand why you think that so I can explain to you so I can... So I can... Maybe unlearn what you've learned. Teach you, like, you know what I mean? Like, just want to know why you think that. Like, where you heard that. I want to debunk that for you. That theory needs to be debunked. Bummer. I don't know where she, she went. I hope I didn't like insult you. I felt insulted, but not by you, honey. It was by your comment. But I got over it. I just really want to know your whole theory on why. Because I don't want you thinking that. You just think... I don't want you to stay stuck in a theory that's not accurate, but... You got to open your chakras. You can't op open your chakras until you know how to work with the earth chakras. <clears throat> we'll get to that. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. I, I would like to do that this week. It it's just <sighs> doing the energy video for you guys. It's I want to be able to do it live, but without the distractions. Like maybe I don't, I haven't figured out quite yet. It's not that big of a deal. 
um, but we all resonate at very low frequency. It's the, the Schumann resonance, resonance. I, um, it's like the heartbeat of the earth. We got to be able to at least be in tuned and know the knowledge behind that in order to access our own chakras. And then a majority of us just work with, thank you, Joanne. I'll never stop being me, ever. Um, then you access the chakras within the aura. And a lot of people don't even know about those. And the, the chakras, you know, um, above that, that we have so many. Um, what am I thinking of? Hold on. I'm gonna sh there was something in this notebook. Let me find it. for why it just sent me to that. Oh, you put stones in your bra? I did that once and it, it burnt me. It literally burnt. It, it left a mark. Um, it's... it's too much energy like that some people can do that but i'm telling you if you're if you're capable of maybe a little stone in your pocket or your bra but like if it's a big stone and that crystal's activated there's no way you can keep that in your bra if it if it's if that crystal is at its full capacity you wouldn't be able to handle the energy in your bra there's no freaking way I, I know that 100% through experience. I've worked with crystals for a long time. That shit burnt me. That happened over, that's, uh, that happened like over two years ago. When I first started working with crystals before I came on. I worked with crystals before I even went to Tarot. And sometimes it depends on the crystal. I don't think it really necessarily depends on the crystal per se. It's how activated that crystal is. So if it's a smaller stone and it's activated, you're still going to feel the tingles. But you could probably get away with that. But I mean, I put a good stone, I put my hat stone on me one day and um, I put it near my heart. I don't know what. And it was a rose quartz and I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was thinking like, I don't know, something about freaking love for sure. But um, that was a mistake. I learned the hard way. I love rocks. You know me. I got a rock collection. Every time I go to Saco or the river, I got so many rocks. But I plan on using them in my backyard to do a fountain when I move into my own home. Or at least within the household. I got rocks galore. People always laugh at me. Even my friend's kids will be like, what's Courtney doing when we're on the soccer? Oh, she's looking for stones. But now they don't even question it. Now they're like, they find like the cutest little stone. They'll be like, Auntie Courtney, look what I found. And I'm like, yes, you found me a kick-ass rock. Even rocks in your backyard are taking a walk. Those pebbles, they, they hold energy, guys. You could pick one up and you could feel the energy in a rock. It doesn't need to be a crystal. Rocks have energy. And you should really be careful with crystals, too. Don't be putting them on all your chakras unless it's being done by a professional. And even then, you got to know where you're at in your journey before you start sticking stones on your body. Don't be putting them on your third eyes and jumping into crystals because it's real easy to do. But it's also real easy to get lost 
in in a different not even a dimension in in a in a different realm you get stuck in a different realm good luck trying to find your way out of that it could take weeks months it could break you because you don't know what type of energy or what type of void you just entered or what you went into and how long it's going to take before somebody realizes and, and, and spits you out of that freaking void. So you be real careful before you go sticking anything on your third eye and climbing into crystals. Because it's it's a lot easier than you think to climb into a crystal. All you got to do is imagine walking yourself right into that crystal. Wherever you want to be, it will take you. You got to be careful when you mess with this stuff. You got to be knowledgeable. And crystals don't always vibrate unless you activate them. Just because you activate them with the full moon does not mean they're activated to work for you. They're activated to work with the energy. If you can't control that energy, you have to be in control of your crystals, guys. You, you have to activate them. And I'm always telling you, yeah, definitely put them in the moonlight so you can work with that energy. But you have to talk to your crystal. You have to activate it. You have to command it. Else they will control your energy. And you have to be willing to give and take energy. There are some days you hold one of your crystals and they will suck the energy from you because they need it. And then there's days they'll give it back. And that is the truth. Everyone thinks by holding on to crystals that it's it's healing. Sometimes they suck the energy out of you and, and they don't heal. You know, the, the intent of that crystal has a different intention, especially if you're not putting your intention inside of that crystal. Crystals need to be commanded. It's like any jewelry that you wear, they need to be cleansed. It's like, it's like heartbeats. It's, you know, it's important. You don't just mess with crystals. Everyone's like, oh, that's a pretty stone you got on your, on your ring. If you don't know the meaning of that stone and why you're wearing it or what it can activate, just like that. But these stones and jewelry were placed on this earth to help activate us without even knowing. That they're here to help activate. There's all sorts of links, guys. Google it. Which stone should be on which fingers? And what is the purpose of each stone? So make sure you're activating. And it's as simple as running your stone through cool water. And cleansing it. And then talk into it and say, this is, this is, I, you know, and I hate to use the word commands, but you have to command your crystals. You got to give them a reason. You, they, they need a job. It's like having sheep, sheep dogs. They, they, they all have, they have a job to do. You teach them. I keep seeing shit everywhere. These are the fun videos where we always feel and see weird shit. Do I know that through my pendulum? No, I know that through experience. Yeah, that's how you can cleanse them. Sometimes certain ones need to sit in like rice or soil. A lot of people... Um, if you know how to work with your crystal and you've had certain crystal for a long time, you should always cleanse that in certain rice, but then use that rice. Eat that rice because that, that type of mineral, certain things go into that. It's like moon water. You can do that with um, your rice too. Hmm. <clears throat> Just go and look because people don't ever think they're like, oh, I got a crystal. 
every single piece of jewelry that's on your finger helps activate certain things. So be knowledgeable about that. You know? I, I've never, I don't use salt. Some people use salt. But um, <clears throat> I also take mine to the river. I put mine in the river. Just make sure you're activating them. Be careful when you're just sticking them in bras or pockets. And if you're giving a crystal, oh, you don't need to necessarily bury it. I still have broken ones. The shards, I have them all in certain places. They feel whole again. Um, if you're gifting a crystal too and, and you know how to cleanse it, then cleanse that crystal. Well, if you're going to give someone a crystal and they don't know much about crystals, it's the same as giving somebody a tarot, a deck of tarot. Like some people might get insulted, like cleanse it. You know what I mean? Like if somebody was to give me a thing of tarot, I don't know how I'd feel about that. Me, now that I work with it, yes. But if I've never had a deck of tarot and somebody just said, here, stop playing with all this stuff, I, I'd be like, what the fuck? Crystals are the same thing. You, you, you're giving, you're activating someone. You're activating things in, in front of them. It, it, it's one of those things where they need to be aware of that. A lot of people will give those and, and not realize what they need to do with them. It's so much negative energy can be held within a crystal. It's a gateway for dark too. That's why you should always be cleansing your rings, your jewelry, your household. Make sure the windows are open too. Don't just sage your room and not have the, the windows open. Like where's all the bad entities? Where's all the bad energy going to go? Nowhere. My friend did that one year and I walked into her house and I was like this. Like what are you doing? Why are the windows not open? It's winter. You, you're just, you're hoarding all the dark energy. Now you're just moving the dark energy around. Now you're just activating the dark energy. Just know what you're doing before you start working with stuff that, that carries energy. You think it's common sense, but it's, it's really not common sense for everybody. So be careful what you gift, too. Hey, y'all. I'll be back in five minutes, and we're actually going to read energy, because this whole time we've just kind of been talking and discussing. And I don't want to do it in the same read. Thank you for your donations. Love you guys. <clears throat> What's with trolls here? Oh, well, every day there's, I'm getting more and more and more subscribers. I think within like the last five days I've gotten like 600 subscribers. So they're going to be in and they're out. But I also want my monitors to be, I want you to be vigilant, but at the same time, just because somebody writes one wrong thing, it, it doesn't mean you X them right off the channel. You gotta give people chances and opportunities. I mean, there's some things I come along where I'm like, you know your common sense, you get rid of them, right? But like, just because you don't like the explanation or just because you see a different language, it does not mean to get rid of them. Thanks, Corey. Right? So be aware of that. And I'm pretty sure, even if you're not, I'm not positive, but I think you still have the ability to flag. I'm not really sure. But just be careful who you get get rid of. Use your best discernment there, please. Some people just have a bad day. It was supposed to be 5.55. Oh, I see what you did. <laughs> Thanks, sweetie pie. <clears throat> so, 
give me five minutes and we'll read some cards. You know, so I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day if you don't catch me in five minutes. Yeah, you flagged haters. Oh, so you, so you can flag. So yeah, see, I think you all have that ability. Uh, thanks, Cass. Oh, is that California Cash? Oh, thanks, ER. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very, very welcome. I love you guys' energy. You're welcome. I do enjoy what I do. It's hard sometimes. It's so hard. But it's it's so beneficial. What I do. It really is. I help a lot of you guys. And I'm so glad I do. Marvin. You're sending cruel signals into the audience and talking about the dark side. <laughs> well, that's someone that's not very knowledgeable, okay? Because you need the dark and the light. And when you get to the 4D, that's how you learn how to connect with the dark and the light. When you're in the 3D, you don't know how to decipher. You don't know how to work with it. When you're in the 4D, you start to learn how to work with it. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, he had to go. That's, that's the dark energy. That's when they say light workers shouldn't be talking about X, Y, Z. That's how people catch you. You know what I mean? Um, Hank wants to know if I'm a witch. <laughs> I do have... I am able to work with, with sorcery. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they've actually guided me to, to do some of that type of stuff. And I just haven't found, um, oh, that, that was not a big deal. I just haven't really worked with those type of energies yet. Like I don't, would I be really good at spell work, like poetry and my words? Absolutely. I definitely think so. You know what I mean? So, if, if that helps, I got no problem owning up to having that type of gift either. That's working with sorcery, which is working with source. I think when you have the ability to work with magic, um, it's a beautiful thing because that's, that's healing too. That goes along with like essential oils, all that. I think a lot of people place the word witch and certain stuff with such awful things and intentions and it's, it's it's so wrong it's so wrong and they're they're spiritual we don't need to be categorized you know what i mean like I think it's it's a blessing to have all sorts of gifts from all different spectrums of the universe and not just have one. I know I'd be good with like um potions and fighting fighting dark energy. I know I have a gift for that. I can really repel dark energy. Like when I can work with black magic. I'm actually, I don't work with it, but I can take off curses to an extent. But not like, I couldn't give you an exorcism. I couldn't give you like, I can detach some energy. But when, once you're working with demonic shit, I don't mess with that. And black magic is demonic, you know, so. And I won't work with demonic shit. 
You know how long it took me to fight off demonic shit? It was scary. It was brutal. It took a good month of nightmares and it was the worst. That's just when Zaka energy wants to get the best of you. You have to, when you have dreams like that, you have to fight to the point where you won't give up. And then eventually you win and they stop. I'm definitely not a satanic worshiper. I think people just get freaked out when people have gifts, but we all have them. Some people are just obvious about them and others don't like talking about them. I just, I don't have time to study witchcraft. I don't have time to study. It's, it's well, you can make time, right? But like, it's not healing. I'm best at healing. That's where they want me. I heal through through my voice, through my soul, my energy, my aura. Any other questions before we wrap this up? Yeah, well, this one's, yeah. She was like, just because you have higher knowledge doesn't make you a witch. That That is true. But I, I do have witch ability, absolutely. I don't even know wh what you'd call it. Like, I, I know they don't call it that anymore. I just know it's all sorcery, sorcery work. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if I could just ride a broom? around town fine with me save me some gas money too <laughs> wherever you find your gifts is that's it we all have so many it's a matter of what you want to study what you want to activate where you find your passion you know I definitely have a gift for words and poetry. My poetry is very um, how do I want to explain it? It's very um, exotic. It's I just have a gift of words that way too. Some people would look at it as being dark it's not dark it's it's very um it's very sexual it's passion <clears throat> i can't really give well someone asked me how do you give advice with somebody working with dark magic well you don't want to work with anybody who uses black magic. That's somebody who um, has not learned lessons in their life and they use magic and spirituality and, and things to their advantage to ma manipulate certain situations. Um, and a lot of people, I will tell you how I believe it works. Um, a lot of people have the gift to work with black magic and other abilities, but that is because at one point you had the ability to work with magic for the good and you misused it because it's real easy to misuse it. And when you come back another lifetime, no matter your bloodline or not with being able to have that gift, sometimes you're unable to use it. 
because you've misused it. Um, because I, ha I had one client where it was hard. The whole family was, was magic and they didn't have that they didn't have that gift. It was it was taken from them this lifetime. And that's hard because they remember it. You need the dark and the light. You do. It's the yin and the yang. It's more than just the masculine and the feminine. It's, it's also the dark and the light. You need to know how to balance them out. <clears throat> and by doing good in a certain lifetime... You can clear your own karma and get certain powers back. So, I mean, if this is a friend, though, the working with Doc Nat Magic, it wouldn't really be a friend because somebody who, who works with Black Magic, they don't know how to have friends. They don't have true friends. They're not working from their soul. So, um, you have to find someone that can remove those type of spells I don't really do that type of work I don't want to be involved with that um I do know someone who can do that um but she doesn't want me to give out that information anymore either because she's she's exhausted she got overwhelmed um but I do know if you feel like you're cursed. I, I do know that a medium could help remove dark energy from you. Usually takes a medium. It just depends on what type of attachment, energy attachment you have. I know I'd be good at spell casting. We've talked about that before too. Because we, we still got to deal with spiritual warfare. That hasn't even hit us yet. That's only a matter of time too. You know? So, oh, we're in the midst of it, but we ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing yet. Shh, shh. We ain't seen nothing yet. There's only one or two days out of the whole year where the dark and the light come together as a collective, and it only lasts for like 10 minutes. Um, but you have a choice when you become spiritual on what degree of spirituality you want to pursue and reach and if you want to work with the light or if you want to work with the dark the dark does have pull um but they use it in ways where you never be completely happy it's, it's the greed it's you know it's the greed want 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 you know, there, there's so many readers that are catalysts for dark energy. And that's why I'm always telling you guys to protect yourselves. You know, a lot of the readers that I started watching, the um, majority of them were, were dark. And a lot of I'll put it this way and it sounds crazy. A lot of people with a shit ton of subscribers, they're either really dark or, or really light. And a majority of them are really dark. Okay. Um, the light ones that have uh, a lot, a lot of subscribers, they're able to fight off the dark. It's so hard to explain. Um... The ones that have an incredible healing powers eventually will be known in other ways. Um, I 
I'd say like 50% of tarot readers are, are dark. And some of them don't even realize it. And some of them do. The ones that are really like um, all about money tend to be darker. Um, I love Lala, just so you know. She's not dark. She doesn't work with dark energy. Um, but there's a couple. I, I don't want to call them out. And I've had this conversation with you guys before because that would cause a spiritual war through YouTube. And I'm not about to do that. But I, I know for a fact a lot of you guys watch these ones. So it's it's really careful to protect your energy because when you get sucked into that void, you got dark all around you. You're you're trusting somebody who's who's slowly <sighs> dark energy can come through electronics, phones. Um, kind of at a loss for words because it would cause a major, major problem. And two of these people were one of my favorites for a long time until I realized something just didn't make sense. Dark energy keeps you exactly where you should be. So if you're not going through a transition or hitting rock bottom or you're hitting rock bottom way too many times in your life and you've been at rock bottom for like years, you're watching readers that are keeping you in lower energy because they can feed off of you. They, believe it or not, some people need to stay sitting there a rock their whole life because of karma. They're not meant to experience certain things, go through certain things, walk certain paths. But these people also, some of them know exactly what they're doing and they're just eating up, living the best life they think and all this money's coming in and that won't last forever. Eventually it will all crash and they will be miserable for the rest of their lives. You always have an option between dark and light. I had that option. I talked about that with you guys about a year and a half ago where some people got really upset with me because I was contemplating dark because dark has its benefits. Being dark has a lot of good benefits when you live in the 3D, but I knew I didn't want to be in the 3D. So if that makes sense. So I chose light. I chose the higher consciousness. I chose chose the harder route but knowing that my life will be fulfilled in a more beneficial way in, in getting what I really needed out of the situation um, I'm going to put my phone in hold on it's going to die on you guys <clears throat> so and I know some people got really mad at me. Like, what do you What do you mean you you the chance you want to choose dark? <laughs> well, yeah, you could live real comfortable in dark energy in the 3D. So everyone has a choice too when it comes to spirituality. You want to make money the hard way, figure it out the hard way, or you want to make it the easy way. I could have simply went into the porn industry without having to use my body, but using me as a sex icon and still being able to make millions. There's so many ways around it. Like I could have just basically did like 1-800 numbers and you think you're talking to me, but I could have hired 10 different people to sound just like me because the doc pulls through the porn industry. It's a huge industry.
of the dark. And you make millions real quick. But I also chose, like, why would I do that? But you consider it. But knowing I had children and knowing I had certain other stuff that I wanted to live for and experience, I didn't go that route. Because you do get to a point in your life and you do get to a point in spirituality where you can choose between that industry and something else. It's 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 not me making this up. It's it's a fact. You talk to a lot of people that have gone through certain things, especially with certain industries. Everybody knows that you've always had that choice. You can go to the dark or the light, and a majority of the dark go to the porn industry. And we've talked about that. <clears throat> I wouldn't have never used my body that way. But I sure as heck could have got away with being in the public eye that way too. Being known and pulling people into the dock and making millions while you do it. So everyone has choices. That's why I always say to you guys, be really careful on who you're watching and, and just protect yourself. It's just as simple as saying like, hey spirit, you know, please protect myself and you know please protect myself my energy and my surroundings why i'm on my phone your phone in general carries a lot of dark energy people don't ever think to cleanse their electronics and that's where all the stagnant energy sits you know what i mean jelly beans <clears throat> Any other questions real quick? How do you cleanse your electronics? Sage. Smudging. Smudging. Same way you cleanse anything else. Before you guys do, um, Cleansing, you should really cleanse your body first. It should really be treated as a ritual unless you normally do that and you're just doing a quick cleanse. A lot of people will cover mirrors um, or anything with a reflection. You probably should. I, I don't all the time. You don't need to. I think it's more of a superstition, but I'm super superstitious. Yep, prayers work too. You don't necessarily need sage, but sage most definitely helps. Someone deleted someone's comment. I'm not really sure. you deleted message so the door if you choose yeah why did someone delete that that was silly please be careful Addy usually the person who who deletes you or does something the name usually appears Williams and how come Anywho, I think salt is great. Um, I usually do salt in the four corners of my room in like a, in a pyramid shape. I just pour. So salt helps too, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nope, regular salt. Regular table salt, Epsom table salt, Morton table salt. Oh, they deleted her? Like got rid of her or just deleted the comment?
could have been by accident too. Oh, I don't know even how to say that word, sweetie. Oh, she's gone? Oh, all right. I'll, um, I'll go in and undelete her when we're done. I'll do it right now while we're talking. Is the message hidden or is she hidden? <clears throat> um, anybody else I need to put back on? Um, just the message was deleted so can she still comment if you can still comment can you comment so what I'm going to do is um I gotta find her. Um, I gotta find. I'm gonna put her back on, and then I will be back in about ten minutes to do an energy read. Um. Oh, geez. Yeah, guys, there was 46 of them you guys took out. Well, geez, I'm glad she's gone. <laughs> I'm glad some of these ones are gone. Oh, my goodness. This is funny. Why did you guys get say love you court oh because she used an eggplant she's okay though <laughs> guys uh, you don't need to flag people or get rid of them because of emojis is please use your best discernment i mean come some of this is just like i mean somebody got rid of somebody wrote um there's a lot of dishonesty and tricks being played by him like somebody deleted that and got rid of it that was there was no reason to get rid of that somebody got rid of this one because she wrote mother effer i told you certain swears i'm okay with but when you start using words to hurt or um in a nasty way that's that's what i don't like you know what i mean so please be careful i'll have another conversation on it another day another another briefing <laughs> Um, right now I, uh, right now I'm gonna, how the heck, why do I always have trouble with this? I gotta go in and find, I gotta go in and find where my things are so I can get her back that's not the one i'm looking for i just updated the the studio the other day and things this are just they're so different it's like once i learn once i learn um one way I have to go and learn another way as soon as they update it. It's like, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right. I'll go in and do that in a minute. I love you guys. I'll be back in like, I'll be back in like 10 minutes, okay? Um, William. Oh, are you able to go back into that and, and, and fix, am I able to do that through my phone? Let me check real quick. I don't think I, I can. I think I have to, 
I was able to see what got held, but um, yeah, I'm not able to actually put her back on. He wouldn't have done that on purpose, so I'll go in and, and do that in a minute. Give me, um, let me just screenshot this. Okay, give me like 10 minutes. And I'll be back and we'll read some energy, okay? So, I'll see you guys shortly. Thanks for all the donations, guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. I'll see you in 10 minutes.